Renaissance as a historical background. The term Renaissance is French and derived from the Latin word renasca, meaning rebirth. Historians use this term as a concept to describe the revival of Greco-Roman spirit of scientific inquiry and humanism, which began in the early 14th century and lasted till the beginning of the 17th century in Europe. One would say that during this period, the so-called medievalism ended and modern times began. Carlton Hayes adds that the word Renaissance should be used in a restricted manner because many other characteristics during this period of transition manifested, which were not due to the revival of ancient Greek and Roman classics. They were incidental and independent. What marked the renewed interest in the new learning was humanism and secular spirit. The Renaissance was an intellectual movement and in the course of time developed many characteristics of its own. Characteristics of the Renaissance The foremost among the characteristics of the Renaissance was the vogue of classicism, which meant the admiration and adoption of all the best features of the classical civilizations of Greece and Rome. To put it in other words, one may say that Renaissance art and literature were deeply influenced by ancient classical civilizations. Humanism was another interesting characteristic of Renaissance scholars, and artists paid attention to human interest and human values. The great humanist scholar Erasmus laid emphasis on human values and criticized the church for ignoring them. The study of old classics fostered human values and appreciation of human nature. Interest and values, even the medieval universities spread the gospel of humanism through its subjects, today classified as humanities, primarily interested in classical literature and profane history. The humanist scholars eulogized the natural, the human, and the sensual instead of what was ascetical, supernatural, and theological. Renaissance introduced a new type of thinking in which achievements of the Middle Ages hardly merited attention. For example, some Renaissance artists considered Gothic style of architecture as barbaric. Their contempt for the Middle Ages was so great they considered it the Dark Ages. Intellectual curiosity and criticism marked the new learning, and those who pursued their studies relentlessly searched for the lost manuscripts of classical writers. They went and ransacked all the old libraries and monasteries, and finally succeeded in discovering some of the works of Roman historians. Mathematical works of Firmicus, Cicero's oration on Cecina, and so on. Thus, collection of old classical works became a fad or passion among research scholars. These works were considered treasures to be preserved for the posterity. Thus, classical scholarship was enriched by newly discovered source materials which were supposedly lost forever. The humanist scholars and artists indulged in self-glorification and wide publicity in contrast with self-abnegation of the medieval monk who lived in humility and obscurity. This self-assertive individualism was a marked trait found among all the scholars. Poets and artists of Renaissance, they became free from restraints and placed man on the highest pedestal in the universal scheme of things. The new learning replaced the medieval scholastic learning. Learning of Greek and Latin assumed importance throughout the Christendom. Even if an artist or scholar desired to attain fame, learning of Greek and Latin took precedence over the vernacular language. Pagan literature and profane history were studied by one and all, and subsequently patronized by the popes and rulers of the 16th century. Factors aiding the flowering of Renaissance a succession of events in the year 1453 led to most significant results in 
European history. It was during that year that the Ottoman Turks captured Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, thus bringing about its downfall. Christian scholars fled the capital, carrying classical works and many took refuge in Italy. The Italian city-states, especially Florence and Venice, received them. Even before their arrival, the humanist scholar, Francesco Petrarch, with his writings, opened the eyes and minds of his men to the glories of Greek and Roman civilization. He was relentlessly searching for old manuscripts which would familiarize him with the wisdom of ancient Greeks and Romans. Petrarch discovered copies of Cicero's orations and his joy knew no bounds. He impressed upon his followers to carry out an intensive search for old manuscripts. He was a well-known scholar of his times, enjoying patronage of European rulers and the Pope. The scholars who settled in Italy most of them settled in Florence spread love for classical, learning among their students, Chrysoloras, a Greek scholar and teacher, who had fled Constantinople, started a school in Florence for classical Greek studies and lectured on Homer to a large number of students. Similarly the Greek scholars and teachers opened academies on the model of Plato in important centers of Italy, the patronage of great and eminent persons in power, was also responsible for the growth of Renaissance in Italy, the Medicis and the Pope. In France it was King Francis I. In England the famous Queen Elizabeth I and Emperor Charles V all helped the cause of new learning. What is more interesting, that even the popes like Nicholas V, Pius II and Leo X became votaries of new learning, which was considered pagan classics. It did not arouse any opposition. From the Church There was a notion in Italy that one need not be born into the family of a noble to become a noble. True nobility can be acquired by patronizing classical learning and art. Therefore the merchants in Italy who vied with the nobles for power and glory, easily took up the cause of new learning. Hundreds of teachers, scholars, and artists were patronized by these opulent merchants who expected them to produce great works in literature and art. Since Italy became the center of all trade routes, the spirit of Renaissance spread to the rest of Europe quickly. Kings and merchants of Europe could invite Renaissance scholars or artists to work in their places. Among them was the famous French king, Francis I, and King Henry VIII of England. The invention of the printing press in the middle of the 15th century in Europe may be regarded as the most momentous. Had it not been for the printing press, the Renaissance would not have spread so quickly to the rest of Europe, but of many religious including the Holy Bible and classical works came to be printed on the movable type of printing press in Germany and England, and copies of these works were available everywhere. The cost of the books was reduced to one-eighth, and all European countries had the movable type printing press by 1470. It may be no exaggeration to say that the printing press more than anything else brought about the intellectual awakening in Europe.